first of all, I'd like to thank Paul Elio uh, for coming by today. He's, he's a car guy, and we're going to learn a lot more about Paul um, as we get into the discussion here. And, uh, but, but he's something that's applying an entrepreneurial approach and an innovative way of thinking to really change how we get around um, our planet. And uh, it's pretty impressive. I follow Paul and, and what they've done at Elio for the last couple of years. I've been really impressed with how much they've done on kind of a bootstrap budget. And, um, and I've actually uh, signed up. I'm all in to get one of the new vehicles. So looking forward to that coming. But first of all, so welcome, Paul. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. I want, I want to talk okay. about that because we, we talked a little right. bit last night about suppliers and, and some of the things that are kind of broken in that system. You, you've worked in automobile manufacturing and design and, and you've kind of seen this firsthand. So first of all, kind of what's broken about the system and then what's different about Helio? So um, how it works today is it's a very confrontational relationship between the suppliers and the OEM. So they do a, a cost plus uh, setup and they, the OEMs insist on single-digit margins, and the, 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 the suppliers can't survive on that, but they have to accept it because there's only nine customers, right? So you don't have a lot of leverage. And then they wait for an engineering change, and they jack them on the engineering change to get their margin up to where it needs to be. And millions of dollars get spent on both sides of the negotiating table working this out over the course of the, of the three-year or five-year design cycle. So we went in and we said, okay, we're going to do cost plus, but we're going to do cost plus 20%. So you get double-digit margins on Elio if your SG&A is in, in line, right? And how we get the price right is through proper specification and, and engineering. So on, on the specification side, my VP of supply chain uh, supplies the lighted cup holder for a particular vehicle, and they ran the EMF testing on it, and it interfered with the ham radio band. And they said, you need to redesign this. And he's like, when was the last time somebody put a ham radio in one of your products, right? <laughs> And the guy goes, I don't care, it doesn't meet the spec, redesign it. So he charged him for a redesign, and he's charging him more for every single uh, part delivered so it meets that spec. And in fairness to that design engineer, he had two choices. He could spend the next 90 days of his career redeveloping that spec, and if he made a mistake, quite possibly lose his job, or hand the part back to Steve and say, it doesn't work. So I have that speech with every single one of our suppliers uh, when, when they first got on board, and to a man, they all sigh, and off the top of their head, list off four things they're forced to do that the customer just doesn't care about that costs them anguish and, and money, right? So we're specifying uh, all the parts with the suppliers. Um, we don't want to loosen anything that regard, with regards to safety or quality, and we want to get rid of all the lighted cup holder specs, and it saves a tremendous amount of money. The other thing is, the big OEMs try to commoditize everything. So there's very rigid lines on where things start and stop. And so they optimize on the component and not on the vehicle. And as a budding engineer, I was designing a, a seat bracket. And I showed an OEM that they could save, and I don't remember the numbers, it was a long time ago, but it was big, like a, a dollar and a half a pound if they move their bolt hole on their floor pan by one inch. And they said, no, make it work. I'm like, well, I can make it work. It just costs you a dollar and a half a pound. And, and at the end of the day, my customer doesn't care what the floor pan costs or what the seat costs. They care what the vehicle costs. So that would have driven you know, uh, a quarter to the floor pan, but they could have saved a buck. Right. But they're not changing, so they can switch from one, one seat supplier to another by, by keeping that rigid. So we've developed our, our, our vehicle through a, a series of what we call supplier summits, where all 34 of our suppliers get together and we work on the vehicle as a group. And when we have these uh, interaction issues, we have breakout sessions, and we negotiate and figure out what's, what optimizes the vehicle rather than the component. 